And now, hopefully, you're winding down the year 2022, thinking about some of the best things that happened to you. Well, for Ariel Turner, that's going to include some of the best things she ate throughout the year and that are still on the menu now. She's a professional foodie with a passion for all things food and Bev here as restaurant correspondent to highlight some of those favorites. Ariel, I'm glad you're here. Thank you so much. Happy to be here. Um, how's, how's the year closing out for you? You know, as I was scrolling through all of the 35,000 food photos I've taken, I'd say it's been a pretty good year. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's emotional. You scroll through right. and you think about some of your and, favorites and, and you remember you. where you were and who mm -hmm. you were with and all those things. And then you also remember, oh, those things are not on the menu anymore. I can't eat those. Yeah. So that's a little bit sad, but also, you know, you remember the experience and it was great. Yeah, he was just glad to have have those foods yes, at all. Well, exactly. You eat out a lot of great places. Uh, you taste a lot of great things. So what was your process when you're pairing this list? You're going to tell us your three, like some of the really favorite ones. Okay. So some of the process was what can I tell people that is still available now? Because it seems a little rude to talk about my three favorite things that you cannot get anymore on menus. True. We would just <laughs> so, be drooling and we couldn't right, go get it. Okay. I would be hungry and also rude to myself if mm -hmm. I did that. So um, in the name of self-preservation and for the rest of you, I honestly thought through what are the things that I kept thinking about and I kept wanting to eat again and then also know that I can eat again this year. Okay. So that's how I narrowed it down. All right. Well, this is bold. One of your favorite uh, food things in 2022 was a lobster roll you had at the Good Boys and Dogs pop-up at Community yes. Cat. What made that special? So it's the owner or the chef at GB&D and the pit master from Willow Tree Barbecue. They're friends. They teamed up and they just decided to do this pop-up at only at Community Tap right now. Yeah. Um, and they do lobster rolls and hot dogs. It's a very basic menu, but the lobster rolls, as you can see on your screen when they pop up again, they're just giant chunks of lobster. I mean, this is not like a chintzy $18 no. lobster roll that you feel like I didn't get anything and other than a roll. Like this is mostly lobster. The, the bread to meat ratio in there is probably like three lobster, one roll. I mean, it's really impressive. Perfection. It just looks mouthwatering. I the, mean, it the is. The picture doesn't it, always capture it, but I it, get it. Yeah, no, it really <laughs> is. And I've been thinking about this since I had it at least twice in August, I think. Right. So. Now we're all thinking about it now. So, so there's yep. one. Mm -hmm. yep. Another favorite <laughs> to reflect on as we prepare to close out the year is the sour grapes salad you had at Spaghetti Western. Okay, I <laughs> don't love to eat grapes on their own. I'm just not one of those people. Even as a child, they would make me gag, the texture would. However, this salad Salad. They do either roasted grapes or pickled grapes, so there's a texture to them that's really lovely. There's so much flavor in this salad, and I know I'm talking about a salad as one of the favorite You're really things really passionate I ate. about this. Go but on. But it's such a good salad, <laughs> and it's still on the menu. I was just there two weeks ago, and it's still there, and I'm very proud to say that because I think everyone needs to go and order this salad and then tell me if I'm wrong or most, I think I'm going to be right. About okay. This. Okay. And there, you know, there are some people that are that are standing firm and they say, "Don't put any fruit in my dinner." But. I know, but you know what? These it ends up being savory. It's almost like adding vinegar because when you've roasted the grapes, it's like a vinegar. So it's it. It's just really okay. good. You have I to trust can't me miss on this one. Spaghetti Western. <laughs> yes. And then finally, you say that there was something very special about the fig and prosciutto pizza at Coastal Crust. Okay, little known fact about me, I crave pizza all the time, even though everything else it looks like I'm eating is not pizza. And it's true, but I think about pizza all the time. Fair. And the one that I think about the most is at Coastal Crust in the village of West Greenville, and it's the fig and prosciutto because it has gorgonzola on it, and it also has a house hot honey, so it's got heat to it. So you take this bite and you get the sweet and savory, and then this heat hits the back of your throat, and you can get it either in a gluten-free crust or in a regular crust, and I have to get the gluten-free one, but I'm telling you, it's so, so good that even people who don't like gluten-free crust will still eat it. Well, it's just really, really delicious. And this this moves me. I'm, I'm near Coastal Crust. I should have been there by now, but if you you're telling me the specific pizza and <laughs> yes. that there's hot bacon. It, I mean, it's prosciutto and the hot honey on it. Hot like honey. You can see it drizzled on there. It's, I mean, it's just really, really good. And I, and as you can tell, right. I think about this all the time. But I love so. this. I think you, you dug deep and you found three things that really, right. you know, yeah. were connected to our food. And, and nothing, none of these items are necessarily you know, award-winning, spectacular, you know, it's not a fine dining experience. They're just, they're things that provide you with joy when you eat them. And I think that's what food should do. That's all we need, a little joy <laughs> yes. to, to end the year. So I love that. Yes. Um, and you research this year round, you're writing for Off the Grid Greenville, the nonprofit that promotes small businesses. Um, anything readers should be on the lookout as we turn so the page? What we're actually doing, looking into this new year, we're kind of taking an audit of the website and the social feed and seeing mm -hmm. what people are most interested in. Um, and it's interesting that what we're 
we're finding. And so we're kind of looking at these lists that we've created, like the open on Monday or Sunday list, the gluten-free list, the where to dine outdoors list. People are really, I mean, they're really responding to those. So we're kind of looking at what does that mean for what we provide for readers in 2023. And so that's something that we'd love to hear from people. If you're interested in, you know, if you have a question, where do I find X, Y, Z, ask us. And maybe that's something that then we can find out for you. Yeah. There's great interaction to be had and yes. people are always interested in the subject. So uh, will you stick around for trending stories? I will. The show? Wonderful. Thank you, Ariel. Thank you. And anybody watching can follow Ariel, Ariel on social media to see where her adventures take her and off the grid Greenville. That info on screen now.